Festival Anaganish Summer Theater and 98.9 XFM welcome you to Wednesday Nights at the Theater. Tonight's show is a recorded adaptation of our original outdoor play, Robin Hood, The Great Escape, written by Andrea Boyd and Laura Teasdale and performed at Quebec Mountain. Sound design is by Justin Gregg. So here's what we know. The Sheriff of Nottingham has held a sham archery contest and captured Robin Hood. He made a deal with Marion that if she sacrificed herself and agreed to marry him, he would let Robin live. Now one week has passed and it is the night of either Robin's execution or release. But the Merry Men have been busy, scattered throughout the forest, hiding from the guards and working on an elaborate plan to trick the Sheriff and free Robin and themselves once and for all. Each member of the band has a very specific role in the plan, and it must go off without a hitch. While the Merry Men are feverishly working, the Sheriff and his loyal assistant, Gal of Gisborne, relax by a crackling fire before tonight's big events. Ah, Gisborne, how is our fine feathered guest? A little despondent. Oh. A week in a cage is a long time for a robin. This calls for a celebration. Do we have any more of that special mead? Ta-da! Where did you find it? I stole it from the shabby grandson of a ragamuffin from Derby. Only the very best for the Sheriff of Nottingham. Mm. Congratulations, Sheriff. Tonight he will breathe his last. Yes. And what about his band of merry men? I have prepared for any eventuality. Eventually will what? Eventually will be prepared for whatever happens. Gisborne, we need to be ready right now. Of course, my lord. We are not all so wise as you. Hmm. Reassure me. Are we ready? I hired extra guards. Loyal? Loyal to wherever the gold comes from. Good. And his merry men? Oh, those one-legged geese can't rescue him if they can't get near him. I almost hope they do try something. What fun! <laughs> Let them. <laughs> Our men are experts in their field. We don't need farmers. Uh, uh, masters of their craft. You hired artisans? Mercenaries. Born killers. Well, why didn't you say so? Deadly if you pay them enough. Am I paying them enough? Oh, oh you are. You've served me well so far, my gentle executioner, but just remember, if Robin escapes, no land for you. Everything is under control. Is it? A little bird told me the merry men are spread around the forest, building something big and fluffy, gathering mushrooms, and sewing a dress. Oh gosh, sounds diabolical. Bunch of pus bags. I'm just following the orders of Prince John, who, between you and me, is the real king. What with Richard Aubrey... Sheriff, his... Sheriff, hush, hush. Those are treasonous words. If God chooses the king and John is doing the job of the king, then he is king. Divine right and all that. With all due respect, sir, King Richard is still king. And yet, I take orders from John, and the people take orders from me. Jump, if I say jump. Hand over your last chicken, if I ask. But yet, they follow him. They'll follow Robin, that big pointed part of a worn-out goat under a stem, to the gallows. Yeah, that. And then, what was his will be mine. What? The Loxley Land. You said I could have it. Yes, of course. Once you've executed the execution. <laughs> It'll be gratifying to see his blood spilt. Well, not much blood in a hanging. Uh, metaphorically speaking. Right. God's bones, why are they so loyal to him? Can't they see he's dangerous? He's an evil, greedy man who preys on the weak and misguided. He offers them hope, I suppose. He offers them the chance to terrorize all of Nottingham. The road through Sherwood Forest is a major trade route, and the merchants can't even get through. Outlaws at every twist in the road, ready to rob anyone with two silver pennies to rub together. The people are terrified. Everyone has a neighbor who's been robbed or maimed or killed by Robin Hood and his band of so-called merry men. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He even killed my cousin Oliver, you know, who was... Merely doing his job, protecting the king's wild game. What kind of hope is that? Robin is a hoodlum, a thief, a poacher, and a foreigner. And tonight, when we hang that hound who's accustomed to bones, that's what you'll say. I can't wait. The noose is ready. 
Thirteen coils. Maybe you should chop his head off. Is the axe sharp? Oh, it'll take off his head in one clean slice. Maybe dull it down a bit. Oh, yes, my lord. Is the steak ready for burning? I thought we decided against that, in case it rains. Yes, but we could hang him, burn him, and then chop his head off. The people need to be kept safe. They, they need to trust in the law. They need to be entertained. And yet, Marion would give her life for that spit-ridden salmon spawn. What if she does show up? All the better. But you're not really going to set him free, are you? Is born you really are a nitwit. You said you'd let him live if Marion agrees to marry you. Live is different than set him free. I'll shackle him in the dungeon for the rest of his pitiful life. Mm, some of the people believe that Robin is their only hope, so if you let him fester down there, it'll be nothing but, but cunning plans and escapes and schemes. Yes, because he gets to be the hero. Rob from the rich, give to the poor, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, King Richard gets himself kidnapped by the Duke of Austria. King John has to raise taxes to pay the ransom. And who has to make sure that the peasants pay those taxes? The Sheriff of Nottingham. Exactly. And I'm the bad guy. How is that fair? So, we are not going to let Robin live, no matter what Marion does? Of course not. Don't be stupid. So we can rescue her... Whisk her off into the sunset in the middle of our wedding, and then boom! Another heroic ballad written about Robin Hood. It's all I hear everywhere I go. Well, Alana Dale does write a catchy tune. That's what I need. A wandering minstrel to write catchy tunes about me. Go get Alana Dale. Tell her I'll double whatever he's paying her. <laughs> he doesn't pay her. Well, then she needs a job. She is loyal to him. I think she'll say no. Loyalty. Never mind. Everyone has a price. And my lands? If everything goes according to plan, and you execute the hoodlum tonight, your payment will be the lands I confiscated from Robin of Loxley. And then I shall be lord of the manor. Lady. What? Lady of the manor. You'll need a lord, of course. <laughs> Naturally. I'll need several. Or you'll become a nun, convert the manor house into a convent. Oh, sure. I'll become a nun. All the women will become nuns. You know what? I'll marry her today. I'll marry Maid Marian right in front of Robin Hood, and then you'll hang him right in front of her. Uh, that'll complicate things. That, that, that's a whole different plan. Why do you want to marry her anyway? Her father has a lot of land. You're the sheriff of Nottingham. Go to her father and take it. She smells good. She smells like the gang of thieves she consorts with. They say she's very smart, but I won't hold that against her. She'll calm down under the thumb of a good husband. I don't know. King Richard wouldn't force his sister to marry Saladin's brother, so if you force Marion to marry you, he might look for another sheriff. No, all right. I'll just marry Maid Marion for a little while. That's not how that works. Just make sure those rotten merry men stay away. I will not have this night ruined, and I will not let Robin Hood get the better of me. What are you so afraid of? He's not a hero. He's the son of a heathen. A mere pug nose of a dog. Filthy like a badger. He's a gnarled-handed, pig-haired, sandal-wearing, skunk-sucking... Yes! Yes, he is. All of that and more! No, no, Sheriff. He is all that and less. And those ballads, only the peasants listen to them. Promise? And his lands will be mine? Once he's dead, and as I said. we will follow the law and execute him tonight. Yes, that's what I Even said. Even if Marion offers herself to you. You forget yourself, Gisborne. My lord. How did the son of a Hindu lady ever get to own land anyway? Who's there? Tis I, young Emingar. Get lost. We don't need any. Shoo! Shoo, you filthy urchin! But I'm so hungry. Please, sire, just a crust of bread. If I give you a crust of bread, you'll be back for the whole loaf. Yes, please. Oh, thank you. Thank you. God's bones, get your grubby paws off my food. The punishment for stealing a loaf of bread is losing a hand, Gisborne. <laughs> All right, you little grandchild of scandal. You useless knife. You stem of a goblet. No, Gisborne, please no. I use my hands for my... my everything. Duh. You know, Sheriff, this particular urchin has proved useful in the past. How useful? You said you liked the mead. So... 
Very useful. Fine. But if I ever see your face again, I'll chop off both your hands. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sire. Oh, stop hugging me. Get away from me, you stink. Thank you, Gisborne. Uh, don't touch me, Emengar. Ugh. You'll never see me again. I promise. I'll see you at the execution. To the gallows. The hanging hour. Go dull up that axe. Ooh, the beheading hour. Yes, or disemboweling. Or burning. Drawn and quartered. Walk the plank. Gisborne, we're not pirates. Of course, my lord. This episode of the outdoor play Robin Hood, The Great Escape was written by Andrea Boyd and Laura Teasdale. Robin Hood features the voices of professional and community actors. Our professional actors in this episode were Kevin Curran as the Sheriff of Nottingham and Naomi Vogt as Gal of Gisborne. Emingar was played by community actor Mary-Kate Burke. Our featured unsung hero this week is Sarah O'Brien, our stage manager. Sound design was by Justin Gregg and direction by Andrea Boyd. This project is made possible through the support of Canada Council for the Arts and our presenting sponsors, McLeod Group and Atlantic Windows. To catch up on past episodes and to donate to Festival Enneganish, go to festivalenneganish.com. And if you enjoyed this, please spread the word on social media. Tune in next week for the continuing saga of Robin Hood, The Great Escape.